Before the invasion of Ukraine, government of Russian Federation stated that eastward expansion of NATO is their main security concern. But when Finland and Sweden joined NATO, nothing happened. We didn't see any military buildup on the northwestern borders of Russian Federation. Why not? Because this pretext was a hoax. In this video, we're going to talk about real reasons why Russia invaded Ukraine. Hello, my name is Ivan Fedorovich. I'm the head of NGO 7000 in Ukraine. I would like to thank you for your warm comments and shares of the previous video. And you can support us now using Patreon or uh, the links in the description below so we can produce more videos like this. Russian politics always relied on historical myths and propaganda to justify expansionism of Tsars, then communists, and now Putin regime. Those myths are always unscientific and self-contradictory. On July 12, 2021, before invasion, President of Russian Federation Vladimir Putin wrote a pseudo-historical article on the unity of Russians and Ukrainians, where he claims that Russians and Ukrainians are basically one nation. On the other hand, the main goal of the war or how they call it in Russia, special operation, was to denazify Ukraine. So how can you invade and denazify your own people? In this paragraph, he repeated century-long Russian propaganda about Ukraine. Slavic and other tribes across the vast territory from Lagoda, Novgorod, Pskov, Kiev and Chernigiv were bound together by one language, which we now refer to as Old Russian. Economic ties the rule of one princess of the Rurik dynasty and after the baptisms of Rus, the Orthodox faith. So let's take a closer look at those claims. First, Slavic and other tribes across the vast territory were bound together by one language. Well, first of all, not only Slavonic tribes were in Kiev and Rus, but also others like Finno-Ugric clans who had their own language and traditions, for instance, like Udmurt or Komi, they lived in the north and when mixed together with Slavonic tribes uh, they made the basis for Moscovia and later Russian Empire. Secondly, Russian, Ukrainian and the Belarusian languages are similar. They are based on Old Slavonic but they are totally different. It's like Spanish, Portuguese and Italian are Romanesque languages. They understand each other, they sound similar but they are different. And it would be insane for, uh, for instance, Italian political figure to invade Spain or uh, Portugal saying that, oh, we have one heritage, one Roman Empire heritage, and we are bound together by one language. But it sounds okay for Russians. Russian Empire and then the communists did all they could to eradicate Belarusian and Ukrainian languages, so the Russian language will be only one left. Here are some examples. In February 1764, Catherine wrote to the Prosecutor General of the Senate, Prince Alexander Vyazemsky, Little Russia, Livonia, Finland, as well as Smolensk should be russified as gently as possible so that they cease looking to the forest like wolves. Basically, russification became the policy for future Tsars and even Communists. In 1862, the Valuev Circular intended to prevent the distribution of Ukrainian language publications among common people and prohibited the publication of educational and religious texts in Ukrainian. On May 18, 1876, Alexander II signed a decree known as the Edict of Ems. The Edict banned the import of all Ukrainian language publications into the Empire prohibited the publication of Ukrainian literature on all levels of society, existing Ukrainian language publications were to be removed from school libraries, prohibited theatrical performances, songs and poetry readings in Ukrainian. In 1938, Central Committee of Communist Party issued an edict on mandatory learning of Russian language in schools of national republics and regions. As a result, the number of Ukrainian schools decreased in years to come, especially in big cities. 
These are only a few examples. You can find full list of measures Russian Empire used to destroy Ukrainian language through the ages on this page. Moscow tried to use so-called discrimination of Russian speakers in order to divide Ukraine. But today we see that Russian-speaking Kharkiv, Odessa, Mykolaiv fiercely resisted this invasion. Why? Because it's not about the language. Ukraine is a political nation. Second point, the Orthodox faith. In his groundbreaking book, Clash of Civilizations, Samuel Huntington stated that several scholars distinguish a separate Orthodox civilization centered in Russia and separate from Western Christendom as a result of its Byzantine parentage, distinct religion, 200 years of Tatar rule, bureaucratic despotism, etc. Huntington described orthodoxy as a monolith, but it's far away from true. Orthodox world is divided into different churches that are autonomous, and they form uh, groups of power who often rival each other. As for Ukraine, Christianity was brought to Kievan Rus from Byzantium. Constantinople Patriarch established Kyiv Metropolia and appointed every new metropolitan there. After the fall of Rus, Muscovia established its own independent patriarchate. Basically, it was a schism from Constantinople in 1560, and in the 1590s it was already considered as a fifth Orthodox Church. Today, Orthodoxy is split into 17 autocephalous or autonomous churches. Patriarch of Constantinople was always considered as the first among the equal in the Orthodox world, but Moscow always tried to rebuke his status. And here where the concept of the Third Rome comes into play. The monk Philophe of Pskov Elizari Monastery formulated it in 1523. Know that all Christian kingdoms cease to exist and have merged into one kingdom of our sovereign. According to prophecies, this is the Third Rome. Two previous Romes had fallen. The Third is standing and the Fourth will never come. Third Rome refers to the doctrine that Moscow succeeded Rome and Byzantium as the center of Christianity and the world. Kievan Church, on the other hand, was nominally dependent from Mother Church in Constantinople, but practically enjoyed autonomy up until January 8, 1654, when in Periaslo, Hetman Bogdan Khmelnytsky and Cossack officers concluded an agreement with Moscow government, which, despite its content, marked the beginning of the process of Cossack Hetmanet accession to the Tsardom of Muscovy. After some political plots in 1687, the election of the Metropolitan of Kyiv passed into the hands of the Moscovian Synod. The privilege of the Metropolitan of Kyiv were abolished, and the Metropolitanate of Kyiv itself ceased to exist, and Moscow basically controlled the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Lately, relations of uh, Patriarch Kirill from Moscow Church and Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople Church were really tense and even hostile. And Bartholomew I made unprecedented step. He granted Thomas of autocephaly basically independence of Ukrainian Orthodox Church on 5th of January 2019, giving a huge blow to Russian Orthodox Church ambitions and their claim on Ukrainian land. This was basically the return to the origins made by Ukrainian Church. Similarly, as with the language, Russia tried to eliminate any competition uh, in religion and make Russian Orthodox Church the only monopoly. Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church was severely persecuted in this process because they were and still are in unity with Pope and Vatican. Let's take a look at some examples. During the forced conversion of Helm Eparchy, the Russian authorities forcibly converted all Greek Catholics and assigned their churches to Russian Orthodox Church. In the protests against Russification and confiscation of the church, the Greek Catholic community gathered in front of the church but were fired upon by the Russian forces, killing 13 of the protesters 
on January 24, 1874, in the village of Pratulin near Bialapodlaska. Now we know them as Pratulin Martyrs. On March 10, 1946, a so-called synod in Lviv, under pressure from Soviet government, declared the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church part of Russian Orthodox Church and under its jurisdiction. No Ukrainian Catholic bishop was present there, since they had already been arrested and were in prison. The synod was followed by the forced deportation of more than a million Ukrainian Catholic faithful and death for those who refused to cooperate with communist regime. Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church today is the largest Eastern Catholic Church in the world. Russia always tried to play on those differences of Orthodoxy and Catholicism uh, to divide Ukraine. Also, Samuel Huntington thought that this would be the reason of the civil war in Ukraine. A status paradigm, for instance, leads John Mersheimer to predict that the situation between Ukraine and Russia is ripe for the outbreak of security competition between them. A civilizational approach, on the other hand, emphasizes on close cultural, personal and historical links between Russia and Ukraine and the civilizational fault line that divides Orthodox Eastern Ukraine from Uniat Western Ukraine, while a statist approach highlights the possibility of a Russian-Ukrainian war, a civilizational approach minimizes that and instead highlights the possibility of Ukraine splitting in half. But today we see that Russian speakers or Ukrainian speakers, Orthodox, Roman Catholics, Greek Catholics, Muslims fight together with Russia because Ukraine is a united political nation.